This video file is recorded in Sabanj University during the recitations for the CS201 Introduction to Computing course as it was given in the fall 2016 semester. We can start. Now we are going to see a couple of more examples and I hope you are going to pay attention to those examples because you will need them for your assignment, for the sixth assignment. It might be the last one but I'm not sure. We are going to add new member functions. We are going to see actually new member func functions for the IF stream class. Namely, we are going to see the EOF function, which means end of file. This EOF is going to return again 0 or 1. If we are in the end of the file, end of file, not end of function, it's end of file function. If uh, we are in the end of the file, we are going to return 1. Otherwise, we return 0. Also, there is the function clear. And you remember this clear function from the C in, okay, class. Namely, when we have mistakes and we cannot assign, we cannot use the stream operator, the input stream operator, we have to clear the flags in order to start using it again and we are going to use it, do it with the clear function. So this should be it. Now the file that we are going to see it's called uh, find average of integers in a file. So open the folder, folder average of integers in a file since the uh, name of the files is always the same, input.txt, just change it to input2.txt, copy this guy, input2.txt, and paste it to the solution folder. And this is the content of the input2.txt. So we have something, an article about sports football, and I think it's about Turkish Super League. And we have here some integers, and our job here is to find the average of all of those integers. Okay? So, can you tell me how many integers do we have? Let's, let's go from the first line. How, so, do we have an integer here? Which one? This 13, but is it an integer or not? So you're, you change your mind, it's not an integer. What about this third? Is that an integer or no? Well, sometimes we're going to see this an integer, sometimes no. You remember the scene function or the operator stream function? It's, it works the same. So if I have something like this, let's say uh, I have an IF stream file called in file, for instance, the name of it is in file, and I do something like this, in file, and I want to put it in a number, so a number is an integer, and let's say that this num, I mean this in file here, is something like this, 3rd. What we will get is the following, that the value of the number is going to be 3, as you remember. Since we start from the beginning, everything that is a digit is going to be put inside this num, and the first occurrence of a character that is not a digit is going to be, and everything afterwards, after it, is going to be uh, discarded. It's not going to be taken into account, okay? So you, if the word that we are reading from an input file is third, and we are trying to put it in a number, which is integer, then the value of the number is going to be 3, okay? But we will see later on that we don't agree with this logic, so we are going to change the code a bit so it, it, it will work as we want to work. Again, don't forget to copy-paste input and change the file name to input2 and copy-paste it to the solution folder. Now everything that was associated with the previous codes, just remove it from the solution folder. Yeah, we can ch keep the changes. Now let's add average of integers in a file, everything, let's add it here. 
So this is our code. Let's run it first. Just remember that the input file, input 2.txt file, is this one, OK? We have changed the content of that file. So let's run the code. Enter the name of the file. It's going to be input 2.txt. Uh, we didn't put system pause in the end. Let me write it. We are trying to find the average again. I'm repeating it. Uh, I can write a piece of code here, C out. It might be important for you. Number of integers in the file is num of integers and line. This is it. OK, so I'm running the code. I'm giving the name of the file. It's input 2.txt. And I get this output. And finally, I say number of integers in the file is 6. So basically, the compiler, the program, recognized 6 integers in the file. And the average is 14.83333. Now let's see which are those six integers. You can help me. So in the first line, and I'm going to sum them up. I'm going to use the calculator. So this is our input file. And let's see where are our integers. The program, I'm repeating, found six such integer numbers. Uh, do we have an integer number here? No, we don't have. What about up until here? Yes, we have this three. Okay, it's third, yeah, but three will be taken as an integer. R, D, and everything afterwards is going to be discarded. So we have three plus. Trab, we have ten spore. Is this an integer? No, it's not an integer. Yes, we have ten here, but if those digits 1 and 0 were in the beginning that we, we would have taken them otherwise we don't take them since the first occurrence is t it's not a digit we don't take anything into, into consideration we continue 5 this is for sure there's no doubt that this is an integer so we are adding plus 5 it's an integer 28 this is the third integer so this is the first 5 is the second 28 is the third so we are adding plus 28 this is the third integer plus it is followed by Besiktas Shiva Sport with 25. 25 with full stop. Is this an integer? Yes, it is. The full stop will not be the dot, will not be taken into consideration. So we have found four integers until now, plus 25. Plus, uh, we have the fifth, this is the sixth integer, plus five. Plus, and in the end we have 23 plus 23. This is the sixth integer, by the way. The sum is 89. When we divide it by six, the number of integers, we have 14.83333, which is exactly what we saw here. Now let's go with the occurrence of the first integer, and as you remember, it's third, 3rd. Let's see how it, it is being processed. So initially, uh, we take the first character after and after is not. It's invalid. It's not an integer. The is not an integer. Completion is not an integer. We round 13, it's not an integer. It's invalid. When we go to the third, 3rd, so the is not an integer. It's invalid. But we have rd and the full stop. Meaning that the 3 was taken, was considered as an integer. And everything else is not an integer. That's why rd is invalid. Trabzonspor in the top four, Trabzonspor is on the top four, five is taken as an integer here. That's why we don't have, so Trabzonspor is on the top four. We should have here for five weeks, but we don't have five, since five is an integer. That's why we continue with weeks, which is invalid. And we continue like this up until the end. Uh, let's see this 25 points, only point will be invalid. 
So Siva Sport points 25 point. Only the point is invalid. Everything else is taken. So 25 is taken. So we saw that we have taken six integers and the average is 14.83. Now let's see how we have done this stuff. First, there is a function which is called uh, process input. This process input function takes, takes three parameters. All of them are references. Okay. The, the first of them is the input. It's an IF stream. Uh, type of all pi upstream type, then we have sum, which is of double type, and we have the number of integers. Basically, this is doing the main stuff. We take the IF stream after we have successfully opened it, and we read the words one by one. If it's an integer, we take it, we increment the number of integers, and find the sum. So, this is how it's done. We are sure that we have opened this file, and we will assure that it's going to be open in the main section. So, we define the new variable, which is called int integer value, and we are reading from input and try to put it to the integer value. If this is successful, you may remember the operator stream, input stream. If this is successful, it's going to return true, meaning that we, uh, we have an integer, or at least the word that we have read starts with a digit. Okay? So if we can put anything in the integer value, what, you're trying, what we are doing is increment the number of the sum, and initially the sum is zero, okay? So we sum up, we increment the value of the sum with the integer value we have just read, and of course we increment the number of integers. Again, the number of integers is zero initially, but we will make sure that it will be zero from the main function, just like it will be, the sum will be zero from the make function, and the input file is everything correct. It has opened the file, we can read, and so on. We'll make sure it again in the, sum, in the main function. So if we can read at least one digit, we do this stuff. But if the word that we have just taken with this operator, with the input stream operator, if it starts with something that is not a digit, then this is going to be false. It's not going to be executed. So we go to the else section. And you remember what we did at the first class today? So if we are trying to put something in the integer value, the, this stream operator has a buffer. It flag, its flag becomes 1, meaning we have a mistake. So we clear that flag with this point clear. We flush the buffer, and we put what we read to s, to this string s, just to empty the buffer to make it empty for another input and we print that this s that we have just read the word is invalid and you remember we had plenty of invalid stuff here in the output as you can see so invalid 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 okay and again we are doing uh, I mean this I'm sorry this reads only one character one word okay per function call we call this function only to read one one word and this is it now let's go to main in main we define the number of integers to be zero initially we don't know how many integers we have in the file we are processing average is zero sum is zero we defined an if stream file called ein file we prompt the user for him or her to give the file name. We read the file name, just as we did here. So enter the file name. We read the file name. And that file name is assigned to this file name uh, variable. We open it. If we cannot open it, it during the, when we tried to open it, there was a failure. Then we just print this error and we exit with the function. Otherwise, if there is no, not a problem, we are using this while loop here. This while is telling the following thing. In file, when we start immediately, in file is the first word in that text, okay? End of file, remember it returns true if we have reached the end, okay? The end of file is basically a special character that is called end of file. So if the word that we have re uh, read is not the end of file, 
If it's not in the file, what we are doing, process input, and we send in file the sum and number of integers to the function. Basically, we call this function up until the end. And this function, always, when we call it once, it reads one word and sees whether it's integer or not. If it's integer, it, it, it sums up to the overall sum, it increments the number of integers as we saw it, otherwise it prints that it's invalid, okay? When this end of file is going to be true, this negation will make it false, so we will go out from the while loop and we will print the number of integers in the file list. We have the number of integers. Why do we have it? Because we send it as a parameter. So the changes that are made in the function can be visible here. Basically, we don't make another copy. We are working with the same variable. So everything was sent as a parameter and the sum is also kept here. So we have the number of integers, we print them. We find the average. We print the average and this is it. Okay. Easy thing to do. Any questions about this code? If there are no questions, we will go with the final. I mean, uh, if you understood everything up until now, the codes were written in that manner that they are trying to teach you step by step, okay? So one step, it's, it's not hard. Two steps, if you know the first step, if you figured out the first step, the second step is going to be easy, the third step, and so on. But if you come here right now and try to figure out what I'm doing, probably it will be hard, okay? That's why usually at the first examples I pray, pray, play the role of the compiler and tell you how the compiler processes all those commands and loops and data. Because if you understand the basics, the first examples, you won't have problems with those ones. So the new stuff here basically is this end of file. Another way to process the data um, input file is using this end of file. You take words until you go until you go in the end. Uh, I'm not comfortable with this one. I mean, you should have in file close. You should call, close the file in the end. Uh, otherwise, it's not a polite way of doing things. If you don't close it, it's not a mistake because you don't change anything or you don't make any changes. But it's a good thing you should get used to close the either the input or the output file stream just to avoid eventual mistakes. Okay, let's go with the last example. So delete this stuff here. Remove it. Okay, you want to... Oh, cancel. Don't remove it, because I, I, I was about to show something else. So, again, I'm going to add them. The problem here was that you might complain, and I also complain, that this 25 is regarded as integer. This third is regarded as an integer whose value is 3, which value is 3, okay? That's why... If you don't, you want to use this operator, input string operator, what we are going to do is the following. Let's comment out this piece of code. And there is another piece of code. And uncomment it. So, uncomment it. Uh, now we have dealt with this issue that things like third, 25 with point, 23 with point should not be taken as integer. An integer for me is everything that is consisted of digits and only digits, nothing else. From the beginning of the string, from the first index of the string, or zero, zeroth index of the string, till the end. If you have only one, if you have a character uh, that is not a digit, only one, at least one, it's not a uh, an integer for me. Do you agree with this or not? I mean, I don't think that this should be taken as an integer, third. I don't think that this 25 point should be taken as an integer. 23 point should be taken as an integer. That's why we are going to define uh, a function which is called is integer, and it's going to do exactly what we want, okay? This is integer function, we already saw it today at the first lecture. 
So let's run the code. You remember previously the average was 14.83333. Now let's run this code again. We'll give the same input, but before doing it, just let me write the system pause stuff. Okay, so we have system. Pause. Uh, I want to write the number of integers here. We had six integers in the previous example. And here we will see how many do we have. Number of integers is... We are printing number of integers. So let's run the program. We have input 2.txt. We have two integers, and the average is 16.5. Let's see why. We don't have six anymore. So, up until now, we don't have any integer. We continue. Trapzone is in the top five. Is this five an integer? Yes, it is, because it doesn't have any string, any character there, anything else which is not a digit. So let's add five. This is the first integer, plus 28. This word is consisted only of integers. So plus 28, plus, and up until the end we don't have anything. So this 25 has a point, this word, when taken as a whole, has a point, and it will not be regarded as an integer. This fifth also, this 23 also. So we don't have any other integer. We have only this five and this 28. It makes two integers in all. So the sum of 5 and 28 is 33. When we divide 33 by 2, the average is 16.5. How did we do that? Well, let's go to the program. You remember the function is integer and how it's working. So we define here two uh, prototype functions. Well, the first one is integer, is integer. The second one is processed by input check. Let's see what, what uh, is integer function is doing. Uh, you remember this function we already covered it today. Basically, it counts how many digits we have in the string, the number of digits in the string. If the number of digits in the string is equal to the length of the string that we have taken as an input, then we are returning true, meaning that this is consisted of, of integers. Otherwise, we return false. So initially, we assume that there is at least one character which is not a digit. We start from zero to the end. We check for this condition here, whether the range is between zero and nine for the digits. If it's the case, we increment the count of that and meaning that that certain character in that certain position is a digit. In the end, we check whether the count of the digits is equal to the length. If it's the case, we return true, otherwise we return false. Uh, there's another function processed by input check. It takes three parameters, the input, the sum, and number of integers, okay? And this is what it's doing. Basically, we are reading from the beginning of the file up until the end. Input is, word is an input. I mean, input gives the data to the word. The red file from the input for the myf stream is passed to the word. Here we check whether the word is an integer with the, functions, with the function we defined. If it's an integer, then we use that toy function. You remember that toy function from string utilities. It converts an integer to a string to an integer, okay? It returns the corresponding integer of a string parameter. So we sum up the return value, we increment the number of integers, and we do this while loop up until the end. We don't have a lot of things to do in main. Basically here do stuff that are pretty obvious. The number of integers is zero, the average zero, sum zero, we open the file here, prompt the user to give the name. If it cannot be opened, we just print this error stuff. We call the function process by input check. Since we pass those data as parameters, we have the values, the sum, and the number of integers here. They are passed as parameters. 
Okay, we print the number of integers, we find the average, we print the average, and this is it. Now let's go with the last example. I think it's the most important for today. Since simultaneously in this example, we are going to we are going to work with two output strings, okay? So this is the max iterated example. Let me find it. It's here, max iterated word. You have here an input file. Please rename it to input3.txt and copy paste it to the solution folder. Copy and paste it here. So this is input. Uh, no, you, I mean, it's like this. Go to the solution folder find max iterated word folder from the solution folder. There is input file, change it to input 3. This is the content, it's a text about uh, networks, sensor networks. You, if you are a CS guy, you'll know what it is maybe in like two or three, three years from now. Just copy paste this input file, put it to the solution folder after you change it to input 3. And let's see what it is doing. Our job here, you see we have many words here. And our job is the following, to find which one of those words occurs the most in this file, okay? We have like maybe 200, 300 words. And our job is to find which word occurs the most. That's why the name of the program is find max iterated words, meaning the word that occurs most frequently in this input. I'm going to run the program and show to you something interesting when the file is going to get long. With 200 characters, yeah, you might assume it will be done in a couple of seconds, but what if we have hundreds of thousands of characters, of words, not characters? So let me run the program and see which, which file, which word occurs the most in this input file. Okay, I'm running the code. I'm giving the name input3.txt. Yeah, system pause again. So I'm running the code. I give input 3.txt. And we have this output that word the occurs 16 times. And this is the most frequent word in the file text that we already saw. Now, let's go to this file. And this is the file. Let me just select all of the content of the file, copy it, and let me just paste it again and again and again. You see this scroll bar, the vertical scroll bar is getting smaller and smaller since I'm pasting it. This should be enough, I suppose. And I'm saving this. I've pasted it like 10 times, if I'm not mistaken. Now let's run the program again. Again, I give input 3.txt. Let's see what's happening. If you think that computers were, were fast, you're wrong. They're really slow. Okay? So we are still waiting and waiting and waiting because the file become larger. Instead of 200 or 300 words, maybe we have now 3,000 words. And we are processing this file. Okay. If you have played, if you have played games, and I know that all of you have played games, you have seen the loading stuff. So if you want to program games, you are going to see how we are going to write this stuff, and it's very easy. That loading stuff, you know. But of course, you're doing, you're going to do it with an image. Okay. So 
The word the occurs 144 times in this big file. So I just wanted to emphasize that, uh, j just imagine this is a small file. And when you, when you are Googling, you have billions of sites with hundreds of thousands of words inside. And still if you, the Google is taking like two seconds to respond, you get nervous. Okay, so you are so unfair towards Google. And being an engineer is not an easy task. Of course, we are not going to teach you how to do, how to come up with a company like Google, but at least you should have a clue what it is about. I mean, how it's hard to do something like this. And engineers are, are having a really hard time. Now, I don't want to waste my time. That's why I just copy pasted it, the input three file from scratch. I'm just going to give you a clue how I did this, the algorithm how I found the max iterated word and I'm using two stream files okay I don't know I need this one also okay this is it let's see what the get count function is doing I think in 10-15 minutes we will finish and it's sufficient. I forgot by the way, if you want to use the IF stream class, you, you can just include, uh, I, include IF stream. If you want to put OF stream class, you just should include OF stream. If you want to use both of them, you can include F stream, file stream, uh, library. Now, we have a function called get count. Here, we pass the IF stream as an input and the word outer. Basically, uh, this is what we are trying to do. We have an input file, a file that we have opened, and we want to find the occurrence of this word in that particular file. We already did it in one of the functions, programs that we saw today, okay? So what we are doing, we want to find this word outer. How many times does it appear in this input file? And we want to return that count. So initially the count is zero. Inner is the word that we take from input so we read input and we pass the data to word inner if word inner that we just have read from the input file is equal to word outer that we're looking for we just increment this count okay we repeat this while loop up until the end if we can read data we just read it and finally when we cannot read it we go out from the while loop and we return the count okay so this is what function this function is doing basically again we want to find the occurrences of this word in the input file that we have passed as parameter. Both of them are passed as references. Now let's go to the main function. And there is something... I mean, I'm going to do some pseudo-compiler stuff. Let's say these are my files. I'm not going to use the file that we already saw. This is my file. Let's say that I its name is input3.txt. So the content of the file is Ali. Then we have Mali. Then we have Bali. First line, second line, again, Ali. Ali again. Bali. Then we have Mali. And third line is Mali and Mali. Okay, so this is my file. Input 3.txt. Now let's see how am I going to settle this stuff. How am I going to do that using this function, this program here? I am going to define some variables. Those are max occurs. I keep the maximum occurrence of a certain word. Initially it's zero because I haven't started. Then I have word count for the current word. Word count. Then I have 
word outer and word inner. You'll see what they are about. Word outer and word inner. What do I have else? Max word tells us which is the max maximum iterated word. Basically, this will be our main output. We should output max word. Now, I'm not going to give the file name because then to the file name it will be input out stream, input, input 3.txt, and I'm defining two input file streams, outer and inner. And this is important. So let's say this is my outer and this is my inner and as you can see I open them with the same file name outer and inner okay so the content will be the same so I have the same text input 3.txt by the way the input file is not part of the ifstream class we can just read it but it's not member function of it but I'm writing it just to visualize it that what we are doing so this is again input 3 point txt and we have the same content I'm going to write it Ali Mali Bali Ali twice okay now this is what I'm doing from the outer, I read the file and I put it to word outer. So, this is outer, and I start from here. I'm reading Ali, and I'm putting Ali here. I increment the number of count. Word count is plus plus. So, from zero, I think initially it was zero, and now it's becoming one. inner clear seek g we'll see what they are doing basically if we had some mistakes in the inner file we are clearing them so we are calling you remember the get count function that get count what is get count doing it's sending this inner as a parameter and word outer and we want to find the occurrence occurrences of this string here in this file here okay so we read word outer from this file and we want to get the count of this word outer and then we saw that function and that is going to be put to the count and I've not defined count I'm defining it here so we have the word Ali and I want to find how many times it's, it's uh, here appears here let's see how many times I go here I open the input file Ali, it's one, two, three. So it's going to return three, but remember, in the end, the file is here. Okay, the inner file, the header that is reading, the inner file is here. And the count is three for Ali. Now I go, I go here and I ask if count is greater than max, max occurs. Now, if this count of the word that I've just found is greater than, is three greater than zero? Yes. Now what I'm saying, well, if that's the, the, the case, then say, for the time being, up until now, this is the most, most frequently used uh, word. That's why max, of course, is going to be 3. And the max word is going to be word outer. So the max word is going to be Ali. Okay? Now, we, we are not going to deal with this stuff here. We go to the beginning to this while. We read another word. So remember, previously we were here. We read Ali. Now we are reading Mali and Mali goes here, word outer. Now we clear, we use the clear and seek G. What is this seek G doing? Seek G, when you remember, we finished here. We want to start from the beginning and we want to find the occurrence of word Mali here. 
That's why sig g0 is an under, another member function, and remember sig g. So sig g0 sends us to the beginning of the file. So we were in the end with sig g for the inner, we went to the beginning. Clear was used because we might have occurred some problems while reading previously the input file when we called the function. So we erase those problems. We won't start from the beginning. Sig g, we go from the beginning. And we want to get the count, the number of occurrence of word outer, which is mali, in the inner file. So word mali in the inner file. Homa, and we start from zero. So we have, this is not the case. This is mali one, mali two, three, four. Count is four. We have four here. Now we go we are asking here. So four is going to be returned as we explain this function. We ask, is four greater than max occurs? Yes, it is. If it is, then max occurs is count. So max occurs is four. And the most uh, maximum word, the most frequent word up until now is body. We might come out with another word. We don't know. We have not finished yet. So we go in the, we are finished here. We go here, we read another word. You remember we were here at Mali. Now at outer, at outer, we read the word Bali. We put Bali here. Okay. Now for the inner, we finished here because we were looking for Mali. That's why if there were mistakes, we clear it. Sig G, we start from the beginning. So we start from Mali. And look one by one. How many times does Bali appear? It appears two times. Two times. So count is two. And we are asking, if count is greater than max occurs, this is not the case. Two is not greater than that, and so on. Up until we go outside the while loop. Now you might ask, uh, there is the word count that I didn't tell you about. Uh, word count was incremented at each word that we read here. So it was one, then two, then three, and so on. But I, it's not that important. So how do we write that, those dots? If word count is divisible by 10,
You can go. Bring me the attendance sheet. And if you have questions about the homework assignment, go through the course. See you next week.